Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. We are continuing on with the Brent Christensen saga. And we are going to be reviewing day six right now. And so as you know, this is, or I shouldn't say as you know, if you've been following this, if you've been following me with this, this is a federal court trial that's going on right now. Uh, there are no cameras allowed. So what I'm doing is just reviewing and making commentary about reporters' notes and kind of just going over the basics of the trial. Uh, it does look like possibly according to their schedule, it could be coming to, you know, sending the jury out for deliberation soon. So it's kind of a short trial, which is, you know, fine by me. Uh, but anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Wednesday, which is day six, uh, they did not have court in the morning because the judge had to attend a funeral or something of that nature. So it was kind of a short day in court. So it started at like 1.30 in the afternoon. And one of the first people they brought up was Amanda Baker and uh, or Backer, I believe it is. And she's a forensic examiner at the FBI laboratory in Quantico, Virginia. And she's handled about 700 cases, testified in court about 11 times. And they, you know, tender her as an expert in forensic serology and the judge agrees to do this and backer says that they test for things like blood and semen at the lab and explains how that testing is and how the evidence works uh, backer testifies that blood testing starts with a quick highly sensitive presumptive presumptive test i can't even pronounce these words y'all with pheno phenolathian phenophilian uh it's applied to a swab of a stain and it turns pink the test is positive so she's going into how they, you know, the science of how this all works and whatnot. And also does say that detergents and oxidants can cause positive reactions in this. And because of that, a more comprehensive test is always performed. And so they put the swab in a hot plate, which is then analyzed under a microscope. And it's called a Takayama Hemochromogen test. If y'all know how to say these words better than I do, drop it in the comments. Uh, Backer says in layman's terms, this is called a confirmatory test. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. And to confirm the presence of blood. Uh, Backer then explains what DNA is. So she's just going over establishing some basic stuff here. Backer also testifies about the likelihood ratio, uh, which is the level of certainty examiners measure the presumed identity of one's DNA against. So, for example, uh, she uses a one trillion to one and says that would indicate that in one trillion people, only one person shares that. That particular DNA sequence so it's them to get and you know they go further you know to get one trillion people you would need uh, seven or ten or 110 earths so you know they're just making sure that they have the dot their eyes cross their T's uh, for her DNA ratio exceeded one trillion so they've established the science they've established the routine it's her DNA uh, you know that's essentially all they're getting at uh, she says the DNA evidence can be obtained even if a blood test is negative. And she says the DNA collected from a toothbrush in Zong's apartment served as the identifying DNA profile to her. There you go. So then they present some evidence of swabs taken from Christensen's apartment. And the uh, backer confirms that these were taken from Christensen's mattress. So the first swab was tested to have DNA of three people. And she says that the likelihood ratio that one of the three DNA profiles wasn't Zong's is one in... 44 sextillion so i've never even heard of that word i don't even know how many earths it takes to make that word but i just you know feel like it's i believe it sold uh it's 44 with 21 zeros behind it she says so thank you very much it's that if, if what is sextillion it's that so, Backer says no blood was detected in the second swab, but it did test positive for DNA of three people. The likelihood ratio, one of them was not Zong, was 1 and 1.4 quintillion, which is 1 with 17 zeros. So, not that much, you know, compared to sextillion, you know, not that much, not that much. Uh, Backer says the third mattress swab was in the same situation, but the ratio was only 1 in 3,000. Uh, Backer then testifies about a swab taken from the baseball bat. No blood was detected, but the likelihood the DNA on the bat did not include Zong's was 1 in 33 octillion. That is 33 with 22 zeros. Lots of new words, lots of new numbers. Uh, next, Backer was asked about a sample of bloody carpet. Backer says only one person's DNA was detected, and the likelihood that it was not Zong's is 1 in 97 octillion 
which is, I mean, y'all, they print this number here, and it's just all over the place. So, Backer says the piece of drywall from behind the bed tested positive in the presumptive test, but not in the confirmatory test. That means it was basically a false positive. It could have been cleaning stuff. Who knows? She says the likelihood ratio that Zong's DNA wasn't one of the two people detected on it was 1 in 33 octillion. On the baseboard, Backer says blood was identified, but the DNA results were inconclusive. Backer, uh, she says no blood was identified in the Astra, but DNA was found. However, it wasn't uh, conclusive. She says no blood was detected in the bathroom. That's very odd because he described a very morbid scene in the bathroom. Uh, she says there was a sample that was preemptively, preemptively positive for blood, but no DNA evidence was conclusive. So Backer says no other blood was detected. She turned in her final report of the matter on November 20th, 2017. Now, the defense did cross-examine her, and she has Backer explain that new technology has allowed examiners to separate blended samples of DNA. So that means that DNA of multiple people found on one swab. They can separate it down to three different chains. Uh, and Becker testifies that they only needed about one nanogram of DNA to get a sample, which is about one billionth of a sugar packet. So, I mean, can you imagine? That's such a tiny amount. That just amazes me, the technology. Thank God we have it. She says they only need about six items, six cells to detect DNA, and that almost every item you can think of has DNA. Pollock asked Backer if she can determine the substance DNA came from, whether it was cells, blood, skin, etc., and she says she cannot. Uh, so in this case, she can tell the DNA was contributed by Zong, but not which specific body material it came from. Uh, Pollock points out that two-thirds of the items Backer received from Christian's apartment were not tested for DNA. And asked why. She asked if Backer was aware of allegations against him. Uh, Pollock says there were knives, box cutters, scissors, hammers, and knitting needles, and other things that could have been used as weapons that weren't tested. And she asked why. What about the knives, she asked. Backer says she can't test 500 items for every case, or her lab would never get anything done. Very interesting. Very honest answer. Please hold. I mean, you see that... This is how they have to dwindle down things because, I mean, literally, can you imagine? If somebody's saying, I bludgeon someone, well, how many things around you right now could you use to bludgeon someone? You know what I mean? So she says her testing is driven by the questions investigators want answered. So this makes sense. So Pollock also has Backer uh, reaffirm that even though the sink and shower traps were taken away, that there was no evidence of Zong, of Zong being in the bathroom. And Backer says that even if she has a blood stain, she can't say that DNA came from blood. She says it could have still come from cells or another bodily fluid. So they continue on with the question, and Backer says they detected Zong's DNA on the bat found in Christensen's apartment, but there was no evidence of blood. So again, remember how he said that he put over the bathtub and hit her with a slugger, and it cracked her head open and did all this? Well, I mean, I'm thinking, okay, so clearly he did something to her with the bat, but... You know, maybe he didn't hit her hard enough. I don't know. That's where I'm like, I'm not... He's creating this story. He probably hit her with a baseball bat, but it probably didn't crack her head open. It probably didn't. I mean, I hope not, because that's just absolutely awful. Um, but you see where I'm going? It's where he's making this grandiose story out of something that probably isn't what happened. So after this, they... Uh, basically, this is the, w the witness that they have up there for the day, uh, unless they update some more notes on here, and I'll have to see... So, as for now, we're going to just go ahead and end this video here with day six. Uh, so, today I'm filming this is Thursday, so they should be in session. And again, because of the way that this is done, we have to kind of wait till after the fact to get the notes. It's usually in the evening time, so it's the following day, yada, yada, yada. So, anyways, that's it. Um, we're going to leave it here. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you for hanging out with the Sofa Squad. If you want to hang out with us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, you name it, it's in the description. Check it out. Come join the Sofa Squad. And y'all have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.